ultimately, um, you have no, in, in the sense of like, for Bitcoin, you have no Bitcoin corporation that you can go shut down, right? right? right. Like if you're the government right. and you want to shut down um, some company, you can just show up at the company right. and, <laughs> and shut them down, right? That is not the case for Bitcoin, right? Because um, everyone, it's just everywhere. It's stored on all these, yeah. it's decentralized. It's stored on, all, it's running on all these people's computers all over the world. It's, um, you know, I, I, you know, in theory, you could go shut down each of those individual I mean, computers, not, not really in practice. <laughs> yeah. um, it's, and it's just code ultimately, right? It's code that can then be run on other people, right? Um, so not, so as a result, you have these, the government can't go shut down um, Bitcoin. And... Um, uh, to be fair, a lot of other cryptocurrency projects are a little more centralized, right? And like, you could go shut down that mm -hmm. company, Like right? if a bank created their own cryptocurrency to use within their network, like that's more trackable. Right, or like a lot of ICOs, right, are actually just tied to a particular company. So you go shut mm -hmm. down that company, mm -hmm. right? Or whatever, or regulate that company. Um, but, but I will say that the fact that Bitcoin is not that you can't go shut down Bitcoin Corporation does not mean that there are not a lot of regulations that are applying still to people who are using Bitcoin, right? I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, um, there are countries in the world where using Bitcoin is illegal, right? And you can just go, you can be arrested for using it, right? And so you're still, really? yeah, absolutely. You're still a person who, you know, is, is able to be um, you as a person, right, are still under some jurisdiction, right? So it's not that everything is a free-for-all. Um, and ultimately, um, y you are subject to, you know, what you're doing with your Bitcoin or with your cryptocurrency um, is absolutely subject to the laws of the land mm -hmm. where you how, are. How can they, how, how can they enforce that? Um, well, so, um, one example, I think a great example is taxes. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, a couple years ago, um, the IRS looked at the number of people who had reported having cryptocurrency and, um, said, well, gosh, that's a really low number. Like the number of people, you know, whatever it was like 10. 800 or something. <laughs> yeah. It was a low number. Yeah. It's like, that's not right. There yeah. are more people than that who have cryptocurrency, who are making transactions. The IRS had actually published a paper, um, saying, here's how you record your cryptocurrency transact, like transactions. Here's how they're taxed. Right. Um, and the short version of that is every time you're cashing out your cryptocurrency, right. Like either by, uh, changing it over to US dollars or buying something with it. Um, the difference in the price from when you bought it to when you used it is is taxed as a capital gain or capital mm. loss, right? Mm -hmm. you, there's some mm -hmm. difference that that is being recorded um, and that is ultimately something that's taxable. And so a lot of people had not been reporting that. And so the IRS um, uh, issued what's called a subpoena um, which is just sort of a demand for information to Coinbase. Coinbase is one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges. And, mm. um, uh, you know, where people basically are cashing out their Bitcoin for dollars or, you know, their Bitcoin for Ethereum or whatever. And do you have to go to one of those to a ex uh, coin exchange to get your money? If you want to exchange to what's called fiat currency, U.S. Mm -hmm. dollars, um, you know, you're going to have to interact with some sort of exchange where you can do that, right? I mean, yeah, I guess so. um, yeah. in, in all, right, yeah. you could continue to operate just within sort of Bitcoin, right? And, and there are various other things you I theoretically could do, right? Um, like there are in some countries, there are um, Bitcoin meetups where people will like meet up and exchange Oh, their Bitcoin, because remember, okay. exchanging Bitcoin is just exchanging numbers, sure. right? So you could go, you could meet up with people in person. And Germany, I believe, has actually banned oh, interesting. those, wow. interestingly, which is really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's not always practical, because a lot of the times you're probably using this for transactions internationally or to people you might not even know. Right. You could, you could, and you can just sort of continue to exist in the Bitcoin world, right, or in the cryptocurrency world without cashing out to mm -hmm. fiat or without using it for you know, whatever, but, but, you know, the point is that Coinbase has a lot of information about a lot of people, um, and as a, res a lot of people's cryptocurrency transactions. And so, um, there was a sort of fight uh, in court about, 
how much information was going to be turned over, who it was going to be turned over about. Ultimately, they settled on, okay, it's going to be people who have made transactions above a certain amount. Um, I think it was $20,000. Um, that information was getting handed over to the IRS. And the IRS can then go and enforce against people for not complying with laws, mm. right? So that's a perfect example of where the law... Um, you know, the fact that you're using cryptocurrency does not mean you're not subject to yeah. these laws, right? I think a lot of people think of um, kind of the, the old stereotypes of Bitcoin of like, you know, like drug dealers and doing illegal, you know, criminal activity online because it's, it, you know, uh, deregulated or, or whatnot. I guess, what do, you, what do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the thing about um, Bitcoin is it did sort of get, and cryptocurrency is... Um, it sort of got this reputation as being associated with criminal activity as a result of a lot of the publicity around the Silk Road, mm -hmm. which is basically sort of, um, you know, eBay for illegal things right. using cryptocurrency. And cryptocurrency, you know, is used as a medium because it's, um, you know, faster and easier than... You don't have to go through anyone. Right. And it's anonymized. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, or in theory, anonymized. Yeah. Um, and so you know, in that sense, um, it's sort of exactly like cash, right? Like a lot of criminals use that's cash a, that's a for point. that reason, right? right. And uh -huh. like no one says, well, we should, well, as a general matter, <laughs> as a general yeah. matter, it is it is somewhat well accepted that, you know, cash is not a thing that should be banned <laughs> just because of its association mm -hmm. with criminals. That's um, true. Uh, and so as a result, um, you, you know, I think the thing about cryptocurrency being used there is it's something where you shouldn't punish the or you sh you shouldn't um uh it's not about the technology right it's about the criminal activity and you know you wouldn't um blame ford for making a getaway car that gets used in a bank robbery sure, right? right and and ultimately um there's so many other non-criminal uses right for yeah. cryptocurrency and for cash right, right. that it, it makes sense to not uh blame the technology sure. and you're right cash is literally the exact same thing right if anything i would think that this makes those things a little bit i mean this is probably a good and bad thing but a little bit safer because you don't have to you know be, this might, could take drug dealers off the streets which maybe and i'm literally just thinking this right now, maybe this helps with like gang violence because you don't have to do these transactions in person and, it, and make it super dangerous and I don't know I'm just that's just a super like interesting it. point um and I th I think I think that the the thing about it is that's also interesting from like a um uh law enforcement perspective mm -hmm. is remember that these transactions are being recorded forever on right. a public ledger right yeah and they're <laughs> like, not right so like it's actually in many ways a lot more trackable than cash right, right. In, in some ways right uh, and there are all sorts of there are things that people can do to make it a little more anonymized but and there are obviously things other than bitcoin privacy coins but but as a general sort of high level thought um having a transaction recorded forever publicly um that is a criminal transaction doesn't necessarily sound like right. the smartest thing. And right. And once you find out, you know, that my, once you maybe go to Coinbase and find out, you know, maybe you subpoena Coinbase and you find out that um, my problem, you know, I am personally as a, I'm associated with a particular public key, right? You now can see all of my transactions. Right. And if you then find out who the other person is. So it's actually like maybe not a good idea for criminals. Right. And there are ways that you make it more the, sure. the anonymous. Um, but I agree. And the other thing is there are all sorts of ways that you can sort of analyze um, these ledgers and, and glean information from I was going to say, if nothing else, even if they can't say, oh, I know exactly who bought this, did this illegal thing, it's at least more information to maybe track somewhere else or just because I'm sure that's what they just want at the end of the day is just data and information to do something with. Absolutely. And so like, I like to analogize it to um, the, you know, this technology of sort of analyzing ledgers is something that is really um, advancing. And I analogize it to the Olympic Committee, which, you know, when they test athletes blood, they actually keep the blood after the fact for a number of years because they realize that the technology for testing the blood, you know, for, for oh, drugs wow. is actually going to advance, right? So they keep the blood. This is a ledger that is forever going right. to be public, right? right? And right. who knows what kind of technology 
is going to oh, allow God. that to be analyzed. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, that is definitely something to take into consideration and in considering whether Bitcoin is, um, or cryptocurrencies generally are something that, um, you know, should be fairly associated with criminal activity. Right. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching the episode. If you're interested in contributing to the conversation and supporting the show, there's two easy things you can do. One, click subscribe. And two, visit our Patreon page where you get exclusive access to the Exploring Minds community.